Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, I hope you all are doing well. And today we are at the back of the loom because we need to get our warp on. Um, <laughs> it sounds like I'm trying to throw a party to get my warp on, but that's what I need to do. I get it, need to get it onto my back beam because I do the back to front uh, for, for the project. I always do back to front when I'm weaving. If you do the other way, let me know in the comments, but this is just how I prefer to do it, back to front. So, I wanted to talk about something that I had to purchase to go with it, my loom. Um, now, the loom comes with a built-in rattle, um, but sometimes when you do back to front, especially when you're laying your, your, your warp here, it can get all in the rattle and, you know, in between here and it gets in your way and you can't pick it up carefully. And I used to use tape until I discovered these rattle caps. So it's from Lofty Fiber, but I purchased it on Etsy. Um, the Louette, or not the Louette, but yeah, the, the Louette 70 centimeter rattle kit. Uh, it's the rattle cap kit. Um, I'll have to go back on there and see how many pieces you actually get with one set. I actually have two sets because I accidentally lost one set and then I purchased another set and then I found the other set so I have two so I'm not sure how many pieces actually you get with one but they come with three sizes I know you only get one of the smaller size but it's you know a little little family here a mama papa and a baby bear of sizes I only really use the big one with overhang doesn't bother me to use it that way and they snap on and they snap off easy so that you can either keep your threads in place if you need to lift something or you know don't let them get in the way of your rattle now I did try before taking the rattle off just taking the rattle off and then putting my threads where I needed them to be and then putting the rattle back on that was just too much so I just leave the rattle on and use the rattle caps now and like I said I used to use tape before but the rattle caps have become a lifesaver to me and that's what helps the threads not um, fall into the rattle cap as I'm getting them all in order See, I just usually use the big one doesn't really matter I just usually use the big one um, so let me grab my my warp first and get something get them on top okay so I have my warp on top of the rattle and on the rattle caps and next thing I need to do is get my warp into a position where I can spread it so this is where I have to take my apron rod off of the text off cord which I already did we're going to put it on in a second, but I take it off and then I'm going to put my apron rod basically on the end of my warp here. Now it's not going to be in my cross, it's just going to be on the end. As you can see, that's basically the end there. So I'm just going to slide it on. I have the warp in several sections because I warped it in several sections. Now I've done what is my left side and so now I'm going to put the Texol cord on. I need to loosen this a wee bit. Now I'm going to put the Texol cord on for the middle section. It's important that if you have more than three ends to hold your back rod that you calculate and put it, the end on as you're putting it on here because once you're putting it on here that that's you're done <laughs> like you're gonna wind it on from this point so I went ahead and put the textile cord on for the middle and then I do the other side oh I need to put this down so I can really separate it okay Now, the next thing I need to do is grab one of my lee sticks. And basically, we're going to put this lee stick, the bottom one, what I'll call my bottom lee stick, in the same place. Basically, right on top of the apron rod. 
but not within the cord. I'm not going to wrap the cord around it because this is just for exposing my cross. So now I have this Lee stick right on top of the apron rod here. Um, and it's just going to be the bottom part of my thing to the to expose the cross. Next, we put the top Lee stick on. So we need to find to make sure we have the middle. This end is so small. There it is. That's the proper middle. We're going to expose the cross so that the cross can be on the Lee sticks. So as you can see, when I did the warp, when I tied off, I tied off two sides, one, two. So there we go. Easy to find the way, find it to expose the cross there. <clears throat> uh oh, didn't really see that one. Move my light here. And there we go. Okay. Next, we need to put our leaf sticks together. Um, I have either the little round loose leaf rings, but right now for this one, I'm using these wire rings. I think they're called like wire key rings. If you can see them, got, got them off of Amazon. I bought these with the same set from Amazon that I bought the carabiner hooks, carabiner hooks. Um, so it came all together in a set with like these wire things and the hooks. And I thought that would be useful. So we're going to put it in the holes in the ends here for the leaf sticks. And then they just screw together there. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Put them in the, does the leaf sticks have holes in them? On, on all four holes, well, four holes on, on each side, on each side of the stick. So that side, so there's four holes total, but two on each stick on each end is what I'm trying to say. Stuttered over my words there. And we're going to screw that together. Okay, now, next I need to put this in a position where I can kind of see my cross really well and get them spread. So I'm going to use the Texol cord that comes with the end of the loom here. There's some on each side and a little screw that keeps it on. So I need to take it off of there. And I'm going to put them between the leaf sticks here. I see something just uh, kind of popped off because it's not even. That's okay. But don't worry about that if that happens. So we're going to put it in between the leaf sticks here, which are holding my cross. As you can see, that's my cross. So I'm holding the, it's holding the cross right now. But we're going to put it in between the leaf sticks. But on the inside of the ring here, otherwise it's going to fall off. So you need to put it on the inside of the ring. And then just put it back on the nail. Do it on the other side. That's of course, I'm giving these instructions as if everyone has this loom. That's of course if you have this loom, the, the Louette Magic loom. If you have another loom, I don't know the workings of it. I do this on my Magic and as, as well as my Harrisville, but not so much the same exact tools. Um, because that's a little different on that loom. But if you have this loom, that is how I do it on this loom. So I have my cross on my leaf sticks now, and I have my warp on my back apron rod here. I'm going to put the ends on because now I'm going to need them. And I'm going to wind it a bit so that it can kind of hold it up a bit. So as you can see, we'll get those kind of pushed to the ends where they need to be. We'll get it slide down. So it's holding my cross. Here's my cross right here on each of my little individual warps. And it's kind of holding it up, kind of floating, you know, and it's got a little tension here on from the back beam. Um, I don't have any tension on my front, but if I need, when I need my tension, which I will in a minute, I will put tension on there over that side and I'll show you how I do that, I suppose. Um, but this is how I get it set up so that I can 
take all these little threads off, all the little strings off and spread my warp and get them in the rattle. I should mention that the rattle only has like five spaces per inch. So you'll need to do the math or whatever to figure out um, how many threads you need to go in each space. This particular project will have 36 ends per inch. So I'll have to put, I'll round up eight. I'll put eight um, ends per space. That's pretty much how I put it together to get ready to wind onto the back bing. Um, once everything is spread, I leave this setup as it is and you just wind it on. Let me show you how I put a little tension on the front. Okay, so when I have the threads back there and I have to spread them, sometimes, well, a majority of the time, I pull the threads and they could kind of disrupt this here. Um, so in order to avoid the disruption of maybe having some of them pulled more than others, this is the way that I like to keep tension on this part of the warp while I'm working on that part of the warp. So I'm going to take just a section of it. I don't know if I want to do all of it. Probably will. Looks like I might just do all of it. I'm going to pull it. So if you can see, I have tension on it from holding it on the back beam or on the back apron right back there. Let me make sure that I don't have anything really on top of each other. And we're just going to pull and get ourselves a little knot. <clears throat> so I have myself a little knot here. And I'm going to stick my front apron rod through it. Now it's not a major knot. It, I, I think it's like, it's like a little slip knot. So I'm going to pull my apron rod through it. And then I'm doing it on this other side here. Pulling. I think I was sitting on some of the warp there. Okay, try to match the area and give it a little slip knot here. Now I put it onto the apron rod and then I take the ends from the front apron rod and then I wind it just a bit to keep it tight so that I won't pull some of the threads more than the others. So that's just a way to keep some tension on it as I get my warp prepared on the back. Now I wind it a bit, take up that slack, and that's enough. We don't need it extremely tight, but we just need it enough to keep tension on the rest of the warp hanging here on this side. And I'll show you that side. So it's nice and tight. My little floaty thing here for when I need to spread my warp. Um, so that's pretty much how I do it to keep tension on the threads so that I'm not pulling some threads more than the other. And also kind of useful for when you are winding on and you're by yourself, kind of a way to keep tension as you're winding on. But I'll show you that when I actually get to that point. Other than that, this is how I prepare for getting my thread spread, and um, getting the project onto the back beam. Okay. Also, I wanted to mention that I was having a little hard time getting my threads in there in the middle of the rattle, even though the Texol cord for the treadle was right there. So I kind of removed it this time and then put it back when I was finished with that small section. That may be something I continue to do in the future, but I don't know, I just was having an issue trying to get to the middle of the rattle, but also around that middle part of where the Texol cord is for the treadle. Okay, I have all of my threads 
spread and I still have the um, lease sticks on there keeping my cross I'll keep them there until I have it wound on um, enough to the point to where I can thread so I'll take them off so that I can put them in my front cross to get my heddles all threaded but I have them all done and spread out and they're still there on my lease sticks if you can see there they're still there and I have the apron rod there just tucked a wee bit so now um I don't have that long of a warp actually this warp is less than 100 inches um but I don't use lee sticks anymore what I do use now is this right here it's um bamboo warp separator so I'm going to put that on and then get it wound on okay so I have the warp separator on my beam here and now I'm just gonna wound it a bit with my hand just so that it won't slip off and fall and you can see my threads just going through there that's enough and then I just uh, wind on but I am instead of using my front beam and the apron rod to keep tension I'm going to use my child, so let me call him. Okay, got my helping hand back there, and now I just wind on. Do that. And as I wind with the warp separator, it just rolls in with you. That's why I like the warp separator better than the sticks at this point. All right. It is all wound on onto my back beam and it looks beautiful sitting there um, all straightened and neat into the colors and now I just have to thread my heddles. Okay, bye!